Good morning everyone, my name is Carrie Hines, I'm with Texas A&M Forest Service, here today as a public information officer for the Rolling Pines Fire. We're here working in cooperation with Bastrop County, uh, Office of Emergency Management and the local fire departments, also with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Do have some basic uh, incident updates for you this morning. We have gone up to 783 acres and we're reporting 30% contained. We know that our operation crews last night were able to make very good progress constructing containment line with our with heavy equipment the bulldozers we also had uh, multiple fire engines throughout the residential areas patrolling and um, mopping up which is an operation where they seek out heat near our containment lines and extinguish it we do know that we do not have any active fire in the main evacuated areas we did have some lifting of the evacuations last night at the northern area uh, so the residences just south of 1441. However, the southern area, that main evacuated area, still remains closed. That's for safety of our crews and safety of residents as well. We have fire operation crews and utility companies out making sure to mitigate all of those risks before we open evacuations. People who have evacuated can stand, still can find uh, shelter and food at Elgin Community Center. Operations today are going to continue to be constructing containment line and reinforcing that containment line. So again, doing what we call mop up, where not only is there a line there separating where the fire has burned from what has not burned, but working with crews to extinguish all heat within 66 to 100 feet of that containment line. Our weather today will work in advantage to our firefighters. We are looking at slightly above normal temperatures this afternoon, but lower winds until about 5 o'clock when there's an expected cold front coming from the north, which we're expecting and preparing for on the ground. We will be working, of course, with aviation if needed. Um, I do not believe we currently have any, um, we have a helicopter on site right now. Um, if we need more, those resources can come in. That is the information I have for now, and if anybody has any questions, I'm available for that. Any concerns with any of the hot spots, you know, around, a, I did see a line where there were some spots kind of popping up with that wind moving in later. Yep. We should still expect to see smoke throughout the area. A containment line does not mean the fire is completely out. It just means that we have separation from what has burned to what has not burned. So we will st still be seeing those hot spots. We will still be seeing smoke. Um, and that's why we do the mop-up operations to uh, rid the area of heat that are right next to our containment lines. Do you still have active fire? There is still. Where is it? Uh, well, so we have a lot of heavy down woody debris uh, throughout the burned area, so those those will be burning uh, most likely for the next few days inside the containment lines. Are there additional prescribed burns planned out here today? No additional prescribed burns today. Do you have any number of the people that are at the Elgin Center? Yep. So we have reports that 11 people went and spent the night at the evacuation center last night. There was also a family that took advantage of the hotel vouchers um, instead of staying on site. So that means the majority of people do what we know that they do. They found shelter with family and friends. We have a very tight-knit community out here, and we're thankful for that. Is it concerning that a prescribed burn does get out of control, and have you seen this happen before in this area? Um, so prescribed burns, I think, are a topic for another day, a very valuable part of our resource management. Um, we, we can talk about that uh, more once we know more about the situation. Can you talk more about the criteria for what the weather conditions need to be to have a prescribed burn? So depending on the goals for a prescribed fire, we need uh, different weather, as you said. Sometimes we need high winds, sometimes we don't need high winds. Um, and there, there is decades worth of research to, to back up those decision-making processes. Um, it's a very complex process, and we do know that sometimes they, they get away from us, but we uh, still maintain a very important part of land management to help prevent catastrophic wildfires. So what kind of resources are in place when one of those controlled burns is happening to make sure that something like this doesn't get out of hand? I think uh, prescribed fires in general, and let's just talk about the relationships that we have in Bastrop County. We know that we live in a fire environment, whether it started from a human cause, a debris burning barrel, a cigarette out the window, chains dragging. We have very tight-knit relationships. 
uh, uh, the local fire departments to each other, mutual aid. Uh, they have very quick response uh, when needed. Texas A&M Forest Service has resources here in Bastrop County and the state pre-positions resources where our fire danger is high. That way we can be prepared as possible. And what are the plans once winds do pick up later today? Um, they're forecasting gusts of 25 miles per hour. Yep, so those those wind gusts uh, from uh, northern, uh, northern winds. So that means our crews today are going to be paying particular attention to our southern containment lines. Uh, making sure that when those winds do turn around, that not only residents are safe, our containment lines are safe, but our firefighters are safe as well. So any idea how long the evacuation notices are expected to last? Our operations personnel are hoping to make some decisions on those evacuated ar areas within the next few hours. Do you know if any homes have been, structures have been destroyed? Very good question. So right now we are have not received any, um, any, any notices of uh, primary residences that have been destroyed. With the wind shifting, is there any potential this could continue to spread and possibly towards the city of Bastrop? Uh, so our containment lines right now, our bulldozer lines, have almost completely wrapped the unit. Uh, the only reason that we're at 30% is we want to go back through and mop up along those containment lines. So right now we are not projecting any f further growth. All right. And I believe we do have uh, Carter Smith here and Judge Pape. Carter, I think if you wanted to. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for your report. Uh, I just want to uh, say uh, to our citizens here in Bastrop County this morning that uh, things are calm here at the, at the fire scene. And uh, we had a, a great response last night in our uh, evacuation shelter in Elgin. Uh, uh, my information is that we had 11 people uh, sheltered there overnight and they were taken care of. Everyone was uh, safe and comfortable in that, uh, in that shelter. We're grateful for the city of Elgin uh, uh, cooperating with us and opening that up. Uh, the Bastrop Senior Citizens Center here was opened up for firefighters as a, a place of respite, shower, rest, and change clothes and so forth. That worked uh, as designed as well and we're very thankful for that. I do want to uh, assure our citizens that um, uh, ha having a controlled burn get out of hand is not acceptable in Bastrop County. That is not something that we, uh, that we ever want and that uh, we will do, a, there will be a full investigation. Carter Smith, the head of the Parks and Wildlife, is committed to that already and we will be sure that uh, uh, we will get to the bottom of this and we will find out exactly what happened and what went wrong and how we can be better in the future and how we can protect uh, lives not only here in Bastrop County but all through, throughout Texas because of what we've learned from this experience. Um, uh, I'm personally frustrated that, uh, that we're having to go through this, but this is part of what uh, uh, taking care of uh, our citizens uh, involves. Uh, sometimes things uh, happen that we can't predict and that we didn't want. Uh, fires, floods, freezes, pandemics, uh, all these things uh, we have to respond to, we have to be prepared for. Uh, so we will find out what happened here and we'll get to the bottom of this and we'll be better for it. And, uh, and I, I, I know that everyone involved in this is committed to that. I want to invite uh, Carter Smith, the head of the Parks and Wildlife, uh, to come back and uh, make a few comments as well. Carter? Thank you, Judge. Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Um, I want to acknowledge the very real concern and questions that are arising from the community about uh, what transpired yesterday. And let me assure you that nobody wants to know those answers more than our team at Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Our staff here at the park, they live in this community, they serve in this community, they work in this community. And so we care passionately about the citizens around us. And we take our responsibility to manage this park and this forest, not only for the health of the ecosystem, but also for the health of the people around us. Um, and so we are committed to that. Um, we will get answers to those questions, as the judge said, and that will come in due time. And we will share that with the community once we have them. But our focus now is on protecting our neighbors. Um, there is nothing more important to us um, than the work of our firefighters, our first responders, our law enforcement officers who are out there making sure that people are safe, that we're working to protect their property and their homes. That is our number one priority and will be until this fire is out. And once that fire is out, we'll come back and we'll do the review that Judge Poppy referred to. And we will share those results with the community. But right now, our focus is on protecting 
the health and well-being of our neighbors. Nothing is more important to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department um, than the health of our neighbors. Um, and that is our focus now. Um, but rest assured, we will keep this community informed as we know more. Thank you. In a prescribed burn, though, what, what is the normal policy and, and who is making that final decision You know, with weather changing so quickly on the day of a prescribed burn? We have a certified burn boss um, that is in charge of making um, those decisions. Um, that plan is developed with input from professionals, not just from our agency, but with from input from um, other experts and other agencies. But ultimately, there is a certified burn boss that makes a decision based upon looking at the parameters, looking at the forecast, making sure that um, that individual believes that we can safely carry out that fire. I'm unequivocally convinced that our burn boss thought that it was safe to carry out that fire. We don't know what happened. Um, we, we absolutely believe that we're embers from the prescribed fire uh, that undoubtedly caused the fire off the park. We have tried to acknowledge that. What we don't know is how that happened, and we'll get to the, the bottom of it. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. Prescribed fire is a critically, critically important tool in our state. We have to manage fuel loads and fire risks with the strategic, judicious application of prescribed fire. And we recognize to carry that out, we need the trust and confidence and support of the community, this community. And we will do everything we can to continue to earn the trust and support of this community as we go forward. And have you seen these before? Is this something that happens every so often? Re regrettably, it does happen. Um, with prescribed fire comes risk. It's calculated risk. Um, in this case and in other cases across the state, um, the consequences of inaction um, are a whole lot worse. And so it is critical that we continue to judiciously apply prescribed fire to help manage fuel loads and wildland fire risk across the state. It is a tool that's needed. Any deaths ever from a prescribed fire gone wrong that you're aware of? Um, I, can't, I can't speak to that directly. And so just to be clear, do you still believe that the weather parameters yesterday were okay for this prescribed burn? That is my understanding. Again, um, once we are, are finished with helping to contain this fire um, and protecting lives and property of our neighbors, we will come back and we will look into all of those questions in great detail. How yeah. long do you think that'll take? I, I can't speculate on that now, uh, but we will certainly share that timeline with the community. Any, anything to say to the, the viewers that are on you know, right now, just a lot of concerns with this prescribed fire getting out of control. Uh, I think a lot of people flashing back to possibly 2011 and you know, concerns there. Our hearts are with you. Um, we care passionately for the people of this community. Um, our people live and work here. Their kids go to school here. They go to church here. They are part of the fabric of this community. They care about their neighbors. Um, we are deeply, deeply concerned for their welfare. Um, our highest priority right now is their welfare and their safety and the safety of their homes. And there's nothing more important to us than making sure that they can get safely back into their homes. And what I promise um, this community is that once we have accomplished that, and we will accomplish that, we will come back and talk about what happened and do everything we can to learn why it happened and then what, if anything, we can do to help prevent that from happening again. And you have my promise to that. We want to talk about the crews that are out here, too, as well. I mean, responding to this and, you know, putting their own safety in harm's way sometimes. Just talk about the effort that they're doing and everyone coming together to try to, you know, make this right again. There are literally hundreds of firefighters from multiple agencies all across the state, including the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, that are on the front lines. They were on those lines last night. They were on bulldozers. They were helping to put out spot fires. Um, they were helping to defend people's homes and structures. Um, these firefighters are risking their lives to protect all of ours. Um, and uh, they are just doing an extraordinary job. And God bless them. Um, um, they need our prayers. Um, they need our strength. Um, they need our support. And that's what we're going to give them now is they continue to carry out our highest priority, which is protecting the health and safety of our neighbors. Carter, uh, I want to have uh, Rich Gray, who is from Texas Forest Service, come. He's the fire ops uh, chief here on this operation. And uh, you may want to address a little bit some of the activity overnight and where we stand on the fire line this morning. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, we made very good progress on the fire last night. Uh, as Carter uh, mentioned, we had a multitude of uh, agencies out here, uh, local fire departments, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, Texas a and Forest Service, 
uh, Texas Interstate Fire Mutual Aid System. Uh, so we had roughly 200 firefighters uh, on the day shift and ab about 150 on the night shift. Uh, as the weather uh, cooled off and calmed down and winds laid, uh, we made very good progress on the fire last uh, night uh, and anticipate that uh, we'll continue uh, that progress uh, today uh, with that multitude of firefighters. So, what does fighting a fire daytime versus nighttime look like? Okay, really good question. So daytime um, uh, is somewhat more problematic. It's hotter uh, during the day, the sun's out. Uh, at night, uh, as those temperatures cool and those uh, uh, re uh, relative humidities come up, uh, the fire behavior greatly lays down so we can get very close to the fire and build direct fire line on, on the fire. I've noticed a lot of underbrush to dry underbrush. Does that play into the fact, I know there's no burn ban here, but it looks like a lot of dry uh, grass and leaves out there. Uh, yeah, it does. And, and again, echoing uh, some of the things uh, with prescribed fire as a tool, we utilize that uh, natural resource management uh, to reduce that. Uh, also, when you look at uh, how that plays into a wildfire, uh, those fine fuels carry the fire, and then as you have higher winds, it can move the fire into, uh, uh, into that, that brush. So the thicker the brush, the more unmanaged it is uh, during a wildfire, the more difficult it is to control. Any particular challenges with the terrain or the conditions for firefighters? Uh, yeah, very, very good question. So when you look across uh, the Lost Pines, it looks fairly flat until you get out there. There's a lot of topography, a lot of shallow canyons. Uh, so uh, difficult going for um, the equipment and also difficult for uh, the firefighters that are on the ground walking around putting the fire out. How can the citizens of Scott support your team? Where can they be? Uh, really good. So, and supporting the team uh, is uh, uh, around their homes and, and structures. If they can reduce fuels around their home and structure, uh, in the event we do have a wildland fire, it's much easier to protect uh, those structures. So, help us help you protect your home by doing defensible space around your structures. I heard some heavy smoke last night. Any smoke inhalation or any firefighters that you know had any issues? Okay. Uh, uh, really good. Uh, no in injuries to our firefighters. Uh, smoke uh, was. Uh, a hindrance yesterday evening for visibility, but our guys uh, and gals move in and out of that air, find fresh air, get back on, on the line. So everybody was healthy. We're going to take just a couple more questions so Rich can get back out there with fire operations and uh, uh, Carter and I can get back to the command center. Anything else that we haven't talked about this morning from the media? We do appreciate you coming out here, helping get the message out. Let's, uh, let's just encourage our people to stay away from the shelters and the designated areas where the firefighters are. Um, uh, we'll we'll uh, communicate effectively uh, in this way as well as on social media to let people know what's happening here. But uh, the best way they can help is to stay out of the, of the danger zone so that we can do the work that, uh, that we're doing here. Today is a big day for us. We need to get this fire completely under control today, knowing what the forecast calls for tonight and tomorrow. And that's our commitment, and that's why we need to get back to work. So. Thank you all for being here. Is there another Thank presser you. scheduled? Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, she'll, she'll, uh, she'll let you know. Thank you all.